So what are the, some of the production problems that might come in for doing a photo shoot or an interview process like you did, Erica, with the Open Photo Project? I, I'm curious because it, you put a lot of effort and energy into this. Um, this is Erica Keepin from, did I say it right? Yeah, you've done good. <laughs> I keep messing up her last name. For the open, from the Open Photo Project, and I'm Kathy Bertilli from TheIntimacyDojo.com. And you've been doing this for two years now, a year and a half? Uh, yeah, a little over two years now, I think. And how many people have you interviewed? Um, over 50. Yeah. Just counting the other day, you can sort of add it up quickly. Yeah, uh, yeah I would say close to 50 people by now. Um, and the production challenges have been um, pretty similar. I mean, a big part of it for this project is access, yeah. and that ties into a lot of, a lot of other things. So, for example, um, I, I really want to show a diversity of people in non-monogamous relationships and not everybody who is non-monogamous is comfortable being out, uh, is comfortable, you know, feel, feel safe enough to be out in their job, in their child custody, in their, um, you know, family dynamics uh, with their, you know, birth family or whatnot. And so, um, you know, a lot of times I might find uh, two people who are in relationship with each other and also have relationships that are very near and dear to them with other people and I would really like to show how all of the people involved are relating um, but it's very challenging to find some that are all everyone in that sort of community or who are all interrelated in that way would be able to be involved and so a lot of times it's a challenge because I might find two maybe three people who are comfortable but then the rest are not, and so it's really a, it's a big it's a challenge in terms of visibility and getting yeah. people who also who are in a diverse enough group because say uh, people who have the privilege to be out and, and feel safe enough in their jobs and with their other life situations might be a little bit more of a certain demographic or a certain age or a certain lifestyle than other people who are also non-monogamous but have different challenges that they are dealing with so they don't want to be a public face or they don't want to be you know searchable by their boss or their child's other parent or things like that so it's yeah. I can that, totally understand wanting that privacy and also it's sad that the voices of people that are less privileged are not necessarily being heard and I, I can see that like how do you balance that yeah absolutely and fortunately there's been a lot of people who are starting to feel comfortable enough to share and a lot of people who have felt open enough to share with me and so you know I'm just I'm constantly working on on including more different types of people and also working with people on their safety concerns. So for example, there's all different ways, like I have to scaffold uh, the amount of information I can share. I photo people who don't want their face in the photo, but their partner's face could be, or people who are fine with their face, but they don't want their last name, mm -hmm. or people who are fine with their last name, but they just don't want to be tagged on social media. So it's like, I have to checkpoints when we do it to, you know, make sure that everyone's comfortable with their level of involvement. And just logistically, it's really, um, it adds another layer, but it's really important to want to be able to find people who are comfortable to share because then we can share what, what they want, you know, yeah. and nothing more, basically. Yeah. No, it's, it sounds like just documenting and tracking all that would be really challenging because you're promoting it over time, so. That yeah. Would... yeah, I have a folder full of papers that mark everything for each person, and then I have those photographed on the papers are photographed and backed up on two separate hard drives also with the people's photos so that like if I lose one I still have two others that I can reference so oh. logistically you know it's a little little system that we're trying to <laughs> figure out yeah um, um, and then sometimes just like uh, travel logistics you know I I live in New York and so a lot of the people who I've been able to photograph over time are based in New York and I photograph people who are in other places as well, um, but a lot of times I would really like to tell more in-depth stories of people and, and, you know, location and accessibility is another challenge. So I'm hoping one day to have a bit of a traveling um, adventure with this project where I can even go and stay in a city or a town for a little bit of time and, and get more of, more of an in-depth story with certain people who might live in an area that doesn't look like New York and have their relationships work differently if you have different in environment you know oh that'd be wonderful yeah i really appreciate all the work you're doing and i your your caring comes across in the interviews 
If you haven't gotten a chance, go to the openphotoproject.com and take a look. I love the stories. You really draw very personal things out on people and like they share things they might not share. Some of them I think their their partners might have been surprised about what they shared or they're you know, like it's just like, wow, that's really personal and I love that. I love that the safety you build into it. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. So yeah. Check it out, leave comments, we'd love to know what you think because things like this help open the doors for all of us. We don't all want to live the cookie cutter, wearing pearls and vacuuming and showing up at your part with your partner with the martini when he walks through the door. Um, and if, whether we want to live a diff an open relationship or not, we all get freedom when, when people are aware of the different choices. So thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Kathy.